lesson uh, 5c so you're going to start uh, with teacher Diego then you're going to come back with me and I will be giving you a little bit of lesson 5d okay guys um, let's just start then okay thank you teacher uh, morning teacher morning guys hope you're doing well so and now I'm going to start uh, we're going to start with uh, with a short video, okay? This video is kind of uh, funny and maybe interesting because uh, we're going to see two commercials from different from products. In this case, I think is uh, cars. Okay, so let's see. to like the car again. I did? Sorry. The 469 horsepower E55 AMG. Feel the power of the Mercedes. Okay, now we're going to see one more and then we're going to see uh, what do you think? I want to uh, know your opinions about these two commercials. In order to give main ideas and organize, in this case, our conversations. Uh, so for the next activity, I'm going to present you, as you can see, some images about these cameras in different public spaces. So. And uh, now we're going to to see those maybe in the first one could be in a park, a camera in a park, also, um, you know, maybe in the center of a city. Uh, it could be in a restaurant in this case, and also in the bus, in maybe some buses. So those are the most common places in which we can find these, these cameras. So then we're going to I'm going to ask you some questions, guys. So uh, I'm going to give you one minute to see these cameras and and think of, think about it, because we're going to to talk about uh, maybe the advantages of the or disadvantages of of these cameras in public places. As the first one says, uh, do you think cameras in public spaces can violate privacy? The second one, do people tell you that they are filming you when you enter to a restaurant? And the third one, do you think that uh, the use of cameras in public, in public spaces can be harmful? Uh, if yes or not, and you have to tell me why, guys. So I'm going to give you two minutes to answer these questions, guys. Uh, so please, please, please. Uh, let me see. Eric, please help me reading the first example. The whole sentence, this one. Hi, teachers. Um, well, basically, there are lots of different clothing styles. Okay. Yeah, this expression can be found at the beginning of, uh, of a sentence, and this can be useful to introduce maybe a new topic in a conversation. In this case, it says, well, basically, there are lots of different clothing styles. So you can use these, uh, these, expo these two expressions, well, basically, um, to introduce maybe a new topic in a, in a conversation. So thank you, Eric. Now let's see the second one. We have in here, the main point is that, and we have this example. So please, um, Digna, please, can you help me reading the second example? Hey, good morning, teacher. The good morning. main point, point is that cameras in public space can help to deal with 
Delinquent. Okay, delinquency, yes, that's right. Uh, in this case also, this expression can be uh, at the beginning of a sentence and it can be useful to introduce maybe another topic or to give emphasis to another idea in, in um, when you're trying to give some other details in a conversation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thank you. Okay, let's pass to the next one. Uh, the thing is that the thing is that so this expression and here we have another example so please laura please help me reading this one are you there laura please yes teacher <clears throat> the okay. thing is that people should know if someone is filming them okay yeah thank you in this case also a uh, we can find this expression at the beginning of a sentence and this can be it's like the the same of the others okay the thing that is that the main point is that well basically because these expressions give an emphasis in something that we want to say in this case uh, that people should know if they if someone is filming them okay because we were talking about a, a privacy so the thing is that people should know if they if someone is filming them. In this case, that's that's the example. So thank you. So uh, these expressions, as I told you before, uh, uh, most of the cases are going to be at the beginning of the sentences. So and are useful to introduce a, a topic of given emphasis on. The, the next part of, uh, in this case, of, the, uh, of what we want to transmit or what we want to say in a conversation. So we're going to pass to see some other expressions. Let me clear this part. And we're going to pass. So let me see. Here it is. OK, and here we have some different some other expressions to give maybe in this case opinions and give main ideas in a conversation too so in this case we have let me let me select this part we have a i think that we have i believe i guess also in a negative way i don't think that also as far as i understand and as far as i know so um, in this case, now you are going to help me to do the, the examples, guys. So I'm going to tell you, um, for example, let me see. Um, Alex, you're going to do an example with the first one. With uh, Let me see, with this one. I think that you're going to write an example uh, in the meeting chat, OK, with I think. Okay. That. Uh, then let me see, uh, Majo, Maria Jose is going to write an example with I believe. Okay. Let me see, also Eli Andrango is going to write another example on the Zoom chat uh, with this expression, I guess. Because these expressions are like um, uh, common, very common and we already know, okay. Also, let me see with someone else. Maybe Sabri, please, Sabrina, uh, you're going to write on sentences using this expression. I don't think that. Okay, I don't think that. Then uh, we have as far as I understand. Okay, this expression. Um, okay, you. I think you have the the clear meaning of this expression. As far as I understand, it means tanto como yo entiendo. And then the last one is like uh, the same. As far as I know, tanto como yo sé. And as far as I understand, tanto como yo uh, Too much personal information, guys. But thank you. The, those are good examples using these, these different expressions. So, yeah, thank you, guys. Now we're going to see the same activity, but with some other expressions and some other students, because you uh, 
I think that all of you have to participate in this uh, this part, guys. So let me clear the drawings and let's pass to the next slide. Okay, so here we place and start. Okay, and here we have also some other expressions. As you can see here, we have the first one. As far as I am concerned, that is similar to the previous last uh, last uh, that we saw in the previous slide that were as far as I know and as far as I understand. Also, we have in here, I'm quite convinced that uh, I personally think, in my opinion, that is the one also that is really common for you uh, to use in English. Also, I suppose and I would say, okay, these expressions also are uh, useful for giving opinions and for introducing main ideas in a conversation, guys. So let me see who is going to, to help me in this part. Okay, Laura is going to do a sentence with the first one, as far as I am concerned. Okay. Tanto como me concierne, sería in this case. Uh, then Vicky is going to do, uh, uh, it's going to write a sentence with the next one. I am quite convinced that, estoy bastante convencido que, okay? I'm quite convinced that. Then Leo is going to help me with, I personally think, okay, I personally think it's going to do Leo that sentence. Then, um, Diani is going to do with, in my opinion, okay, Diani, in my opinion. Then Lisbeth Muñoz is going to write a sentence with, I suppose. And the final one, um, let me see, mm -mm -mm. we already participated. Okay, David Bravo is going to help me with the last one, I would say. Okay. Okay, guys. The same time. Okay, you will have two minutes to write your your examples in the Zoom chat. And the, and the same, guys. If you have any questions with these expressions, uh, please let me know. Okay, let me see. Leo says, I personally think we should be uh, good for anything. Yes, that's a good example. So we have this one uh, with I personally think. Okay. Okay, that bit Bravo says, I'd say the semester will end soon in this pandemic. Okay, but just remember that, um, uh, okay, the capital letter in will and uh, that we need to another O in the word soon because uh, soon uh, has a different meaning, okay? To say pronto, we said soon with double, double O. Okay, I'd say, but that's a good example, so thank you. Now let's see. Okay, we already have a personal thing, and I would say, 
Okay, Lisbeth says, I suppose there's anything on that rack for me. Okay. Okay, so let me, um, I suppose, yeah, we have with I suppose. In my opinion, in my opinion, I consider that eating healthy, exer exercising help you to raise your defenses and grow healthy. Okay, nicer it could be. And doing exercise uh, will help you to raise your defenses and grow healthy. Okay, but that's a good example. We have with, in my opinion, then we have uh, the Laura's examples that says, as far as I am concerned, the economist must have data to analyze the situation in the country. Yes, that's a good example too. So we have this with uh, as far as I am concerned. So just the biggest example is missing, okay? I am quite convinced that. Estoy bastante convencido de. Okay, just was just one more sentence, guys. And we pass to see some other expressions because there are lots of different expressions we can use for different purposes so in this case just we're uh, seeing these expressions to give main ideas and also to give uh, in this case our personal uh, opinions okay cassandra says i personally consider that you should not go out uh, much okay in this case could we go out too much that could be better I personally consider that you shouldn't or you should not go go out too much could be maybe Javier Cordova can you help me with uh, with this example I'm quite convinced that can you help me writing on the meeting chat how would it be ¿Cómo nos quedaría la oración? I'm quite convinced that that uh, can be useful for us to to organize our conversations okay and here we have different expressions in this case with a different purpose that is to add some other ideas okay. so in this case we have these these expressions uh, such as linking words como conectores linking words for example we have in here um, this expression also in addition, furthermore, moreover, what's more, and another thing is, okay, these expressions, uh, we can find, uh, or we can use these expressions to add some more information on some other details, important details that we want to hear in our conversations okay, or maybe in our writings we can use okay when we want to set something else about the same topic uh, we can use uh, these expressions for example also that you already know in addition that is similar to also furthermore moreover what's more and another thing is so i'm going to write an example with this one what's more What's more, uh, let me see, interesting about um, the film is the, um, it's the plot could be. What's more interesting about the film is the plot. Lo que es más interesante de la película es la trama. It's the plot. Okay, that could be an example with what's more. So uh, now I'm going to uh, tell you which is going to help me with an example with different, uh, with these uh, different expressions. So let me see who hasn't participated yet. Please, Lillian, you're going to write a sentence on the Zoom chat with this expression also. Then Mauricio is going to write a sentence with in addition. 
And so Elizabeth Cabrera is going to write one with furthermore. Uh, then um, Majo Maria Jose is going to write with moreover. Let me see. Okay, I'm quite convinced that I will be able to graduate. Yes, that's a good example with the previous expression. So thank you, Javier. Now let's see uh, the final one. Uh, Giovanna is going to help me with the final one. Another thing is, okay guys, so you will have two minutes to write these sentences of final expressions. We're going to see today's class. So here we have these expressions to introduce maybe a list. For example, when we want to list something, uh, maybe when we're talking about um, it could be a general topic and we want to to list some other details or some other branches or uh, the whole topic we can use these expressions cuando queremos introducir una lista sería para enlistar we can use some of these different expressions as you can see in here we have uh, the first one as follows okay as follows, uh, we have the second one. There are two problems, also two or three or four problems, and we have to list the different problems so the number in here can vary. Okay, it's not need to be just two. We can have put there are three, there are four, there are five, depending on what we're writing or what we're going to to say. And then we have a for a couple of reasons, then we have namely and such as, okay, such as. Uh, so in here we have a uh, different example. So let me see. Okay, let me read a bit in here. Okay, so yeah, there it is. So uh, please, um, Vicky, please help me reading the first example. Can you help me reading the first example, Vicky, with as follows? Okay, so maybe Erika, please help me reading the first example. El que dice there are two teacher or oh, there are yes. some. Yes, there are some factors. There are some factors that intervene in learning a language uh, as follow culture, environment, first language, etc. Okay, yeah, thank you. So in this case, uh, you see that uh, we can find these expressions as follows. So I guess here it's missing one S, as follows. It's the whole expression. As follows, culture, environment, and first language. Okay, we can use these expressions to list, for example, uh, to list different factors in this case. Because the sentence says that we are going to talk about some factors that intervene in learning a language, and here we have, we list uh, some of these factors. For example, culture, environment, first language, and always we can we need to use a comma uh, when enlisting these these factors. For for example, culture, comma, environment, comma, first language, comma. And maybe uh, if we know the, the and we have an established number of these things that we we need to list. We can just place maybe an an i and sorry an and and the last one in a period. But in this case, also we can find some. We can use um, these these etc. In this case, okay. Because we we we're not we not we don't have a a definite number of the things that we are listing. Okay, guys. So now let's read the second example. Let me change the color in here. We have this example. 
Okay. Thank you, Erika. So please, Diani, help me reading the example with this expression. There are two problems. Are you there, Diani, please? Listo, teach. Eh, el que dice there are two problems, ¿cierto? Yes. Yeah. There are two problems related uh, with academic performance, uh, low motivation and stress. Okay, yeah. In this case, uh, we have a definite number of, in this case, problems, okay? There are two problems related with academic performance and we have to list uh, those problems in this case low motivation and stress low motivation low motivation is the first one and stress is the second one so uh, but uh, maybe we can if we have something some some more and more things that we want to list uh, we can say there are three problems four five six whatever number of different problems okay then we have this expression for a couple of reasons so let me change the color for a couple of reasons and so let me see alex diaz please can you help me reading this sentence For, for a couple of reasons, this inciting is remarkable for a couple of reasons, the number of jury people and the number of people who help it. Okay, thank you. In this case also, we can find this expression uh, maybe in the middle of a sentence. <clears throat> Uh, as the as the first one as follows we can find this in the middle of a sentence and also namely and such as but uh, uh, also the, there are two problems this can be found just at the beginning of of a sentence when we are starting a sentence we need to use this this expression okay to list but the rest of the expressions are going to be found in the middle of the sentence i guess so in this case it says the incident is, is remarkable for a couple of reasons and we have to list in the, this case the reasons the first one the number of injured people and the second one that is the number of people who helped in this incident okay thank you alex then we have uh, the next expression that is namely so let me see here is the example with this expression. So, Jocelyn, please. Jocelyn Lopez, can you help me reading this example in purple? With namely? Yeah, teacher. The, the actor showed it of his professionalism, and namely his kick humor and perfect timing. Okay, yeah. In this case also, we can use this expression namely to list uh, some features in this case. We're going to, uh, we're talking about some, uh, the actor, in this case that's it, is the subject, uh, and we're talking about his professionalism. And uh, uh, so some features of his professionalism could be his quick humor and perfect timing in acting could be. So we are listing two things in here. So then you, we can use this expression namely. And the final one, let me change the color. We have uh, uh, with such as. With such as. So please, um, who hasn't participated yet? Um, I guess. Okay, Leo, help me reading this sentence, this last example. The namely teacher. Uh, such as, the last one. Such as, 
The next semester, I'm going to study different subjects such as anatomy, gynecology, and, and biology. Okay, yeah, that's right. Uh, also, we can use these expressions such as to, to list, okay, when we are going to list some, in this case, subjects. In this case, we have anatomy, gynecology, and embryology, okay. Those are subjects related with the uh, medical field. And those are the, the expressions uh, um, that we can use to introduce a list or to list some things that we, we want in a conversation. Okay, guys, so don't forget these expressions because later uh, later on we can use, we need to use, we will need to use these expressions, guys. So now we're going to see the la uh, so let me clear this part and we're going to pass. Okay, also we can find some expressions to show order in a conversation. For example, maybe um, those, those three expressions, let me see, let me select these expressions. For example, we have in here the first one, first of all. Okay, let me change the color. Let me shape. For example, we have in here the first one, first of all, as you can see here. Uh, this expression can be found uh, at the beginning of a sentence, always. Always will be at the beginning of a sentence. Okay, uh, we, for example, here we have, first of all, it's important to be punctual. Maybe uh, in this case, we're talking about uh, some classroom rules. Maybe it could be. So first of all, Lo primero de todo, first of all, then we can use a second of all, maybe when listing some rules. Second of all is necessary to pay attention. Uh, also, we can find secondly, that is similar to second of all. Secondly, okay, here the, it's not with F, it's with T. Secondly, we're going to talk about manners, that could be maybe and also we can find uh, these expressions with numbers uh, maybe when we we may list some factors for example we can say there are some fa some factors related with uh, pollution so there are some different kinds of pollution one water pollution in rivers and two air pollution in cities okay so these are considered also a such as um, expressions to show order, maybe in conversations or in dialogues, in, in writing also. In writing maybe um, you, when, when you, can, you need to write maybe a paragraph or any say on any story, you can use these expressions to show order or to give order to the story of, of, of your conversations, of your writings or whatever you need to do. Okay, guys. Then, and here we have the last expressions we're going to see in this class. The, uh, that are uh, these expressions to show agreement and disagreement. That uh, maybe when we are um, we agree with something or not. So those are for and against expressions. Pro and cons. It could be. Expresiones para mostrar nuestro acuerdo, si estamos de acuerdo con algo o en contra. So, in here we have these expressions. The first one, it says, that's a good point, but, es un buen punto, pero. And then we have, absolutely, I agree with that. This is an expression useful to, to show agreement. Uh, also, we have maybe, but on the other hand, and then we have, uh, that's a good idea. This also is one expression to show agreement. And the last one, I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure about that. And we can use the expression but to connect these ideas or these expressions. For, exa for example, we can just say, that's a good point as a response maybe um, 
of the topic that we were discussing before about the, the cameras. Uh, we can say the cameras are installed in public, place, public spaces uh, because of security. Okay, that's the main, the, the main sentence. And we can say that's a good point, but some people can feel that their, their privacy is being uh, violated. Okay, it could be. And also we have absolutely, I agreed with that. Yeah, maybe that uh, that's just uh, an expression to show agreement, and we can use this expression but to share our uh, a different point of view to share if we have a different opinion about something, we can use this expression but in this case but on the other hand, pero por otro lado, but on the other hand, I think I believe that. Okay, we can use these expressions to to show uh, our agreement or disagreement in some issues. Okay, guys, so we're going to pass, guys. Let me see. In here we have uh, also some other three expressions that we can use to show agreement or disagreement. For example, we can use that's true when we completely agree with some something. That's true, as well as that. That's true. You're right, also could be. And then um, we can use this one. You've got a pointer, tienes un punto. And we can use but, the expression but, if we want to show an, a, another opinion, a different perspective. And the last one that is, I never really thought of it in that way. So these expressions we already see in the first activity, in the, in the, in the dialogue, okay, that uh, your classmates read. So there you, uh, we find these expressions. Okay, also, um, uh, another expression is that's right. That is similar to, to say that's true. That's true, that's right. Those are like synonym phrases that we can use to show agreement in this case. Okay, guys, so now we're going to see some, we're going to practice with this sentence, okay? Here, uh, let me select this part. Here we have the base sentence, okay? It could be, I think metal detectors should be used in all public buildings. It will be safer. Dice, yo creo que los detectores de metales deberían ser usados en todos eh, los lugares públicos, las instalaciones públicas. Esto sería más seguro. Eh, in here we have eh, a person that... Eh, Okay, una respuesta. We have a response of this, this sentence. You got a point. Tienes un buen punto. But, remember that we use this but when we want to share a different, uh, a different opinion or a different perspective about something. In this case, we're talking about metal detectors. Okay, so it says, you got a point, but we shouldn't be made to go through one in every building. Pero no deberíamos eh, pasar eh, en uno de estos detectores en cada, cada lugar que vamos, sería. But we shouldn't be made to go through one in every building. Okay, so in here we have the second, ex the second sentence. So, if kids get caught uh, skipping school without permission, then their parents should be fined. Si los niños, en este caso, eh, los encuentran eh, faltando a clases o saltándose clases sin permiso, eh, entonces los, sus padres deberían ser multados, it says. So then, in here we are going to share a different perspective. We are going to give a response using one of these expressions. Maybe eh, you've got a point, but expressions that we see before. So let me clear the drawings. We are going to review again the, these expressions that were in the chart. Maybe you can, we can use these expressions, or maybe you can take a screenshot of these three expressions. That's true. You got a point there. I never really thought of it that way. 
because activity, guys. Write these three expressions down so you can have them and don't lose them so you can use it in the next exercise. Okay, guys, so maybe you can do a yeah, screenshot. Okay, you wanna say something? Alex, please. Eh, te quiero una consulta. Aquí, never y really, o sea, I never le puedo reemplazar por I really y si sí, sigo sí, la oración o el really es en, este, en esta oración o es opcional. Uh, yes, that's it, the second one. Uh, we can use I never thought of it that way or I never really thought of it that way. So let me write it over here. Pero no cambia la oración, significa lo mismo o te gusta la oración? No cambia. Solo que le puedes dar un poco más de, de énfasis, podría mm, ser. No. Of it that way. You can use the in this way, in the for, in this way I never thought of it that way, or also I never really thought of it that way. Okay, Thank you. Thank you. so please guys, uh, maybe you can do a screenshot of these three expressions because we are going to use these, uh, those in the next activity guys. So, let me clear this part and we're going to pass. Okay guys, so as I told you before in here we have some statements that we're, we need to give another opinion, a different perspective of this statement. For example, if kids get caught skipping classes or skipping school without permission, then their parents should be fined. Dice en este caso, eh, podría ser si es que lo, se les encuentra a los niños que se fugan de las clases sus, eh, sin permiso, eh, sus padres deberían ser multados. ¿Cómo pondríamos? ¿Qué expresión creen que podríamos poner ahí? <coughs> That's true, you got a point there. Of, I never really thought about it before. Which one? Which one? Okay. Um, ¿dónde está? Excuse me, ticket, but it's fine. Eh, that's, that's true, pero that's two dozen. Eso no es verdad. Okay, that's true. But, no, no, o sea, yo quiero decir, eso no es verdad, teacher. Porque las oh. demás no, no, no me encajan. Ok, let me see, let me explain, ok. Uh, the sentence says, if kids get caught skipping classes without permission, then their parents should be fined. Dice si es que los, se les encuentra a los niños o se les cacha a los niños que se están eh, saltando las clases o que están faltando a clases sin que permiso. Que se están fugando. Eh, ajá, que se están fugando. Eh, sus padres deberían ser, ser, ser multados. Entonces, si es que alguien nos dice eso, o sea, es una, esa es una opinión de una persona. Entonces, nosotros podemos responder con esta expresión. Es verdad, but... Pero, y ahí tenemos que poner nuestra propia opinión acerca de, de, esta, de este statement, de esta oración. Uh -huh. Que no siempre Entonces, puede ser igual, no siempre puede ser verdad, ¿no? Yes, that's the reason why we have different, uh, different expressions to show agreement or disagreement. And we can use these expressions to, show, to share our opinions. In this case, it could be that's true, but... Uh, ¿Cómo pondríamos? ¿Qué, ¿Qué opinamos acerca de esto? ¿Qué opinan ustedes? ¿Deberían ser los padres de estos niños que se fugan multados o no? Eh, teacher, entonces, ahí le puedo poner, a ver, that's true, but, eh, pero... Uh, children are demons. Los niños son los demonios. O sea, quiero poner teacher, pero es que ¿por qué quiero utilizar? No, pero. 
¿Cómo puedo utilizar el por qué en vez del pero? Ok, en este caso, uh, you, you just have to, to change the Eso es verdad. Antes de llegar, entonces, that's true, because... Yes, you uh, can use that. Because they are sparring uh, control uh, their, their children. Okay, so let me see. That's true. Because uh, their parents should control of their children. Okay, yeah. It's true, but it's porque es como que estoy a, apoyando al, al es verdad. Nosotros tomamos, como dijo hace rato, va. A ver, lo que pasa es que tú estás, tienes una idea, eh, Alex, de um, dar una opinión, pero tú estás dando tu opinión eh, como apoyando a lo que alguien más ya dijo. ¿sí? Por eso tú utilizas el because. Luego llevamos otras formas también de utilizar en lugar, otras palabras en lugar de because. Pero en este caso, todas las frases que eh, en, aquí tenemos en esta pantalla, pues nos están sirviendo para contrastar ideas, no para estar de acuerdo con ciertas ideas ¿sí? o con opiniones. Cuando tú contrastas ideas, estás diciendo algo bueno, pero también estás añadiendo algo malo. Sí, por ejemplo, en este caso dice, if kids uh, get caught uh, the, to skip the, uh, skipping school without permission, their parents should be fin. Yeah. Si, uh, si se encuentran los niños que se han fugado de clases sin permiso, los padres deberían ser multados. That's true. Sí, está bien que les multen a los papás. But, but, you need to think that uh, kids need to be Free, for example. Es decir, esta oración o esta frase puedes ocupar cuando tú estás de acuerdo con algo, con cierta parte de lo que te están diciendo, pero no estás de acuerdo con otra parte. Sí, es decir, quieres añadir lo que tal vez tú no compartes. But, um, but the kids are very outgoing, for example. Sí, los niños son muy extrovertidos. Entonces... Es, es como el, estás contrastando o dando las dos caras de la realidad. Tú estás opinando acerca de una cosa, ¿sí? Estás de acuerdo con una parte del todo y también tú añades tu otra opinión. Es decir, tal vez con lo que no estás de acuerdo. Por eso utilizamos este but, ¿sí? Es para añadir el pero. Es como cuando, por ejemplo, um, tú le dices... Vamos a suponer que todavía viven con sus papás y le dicen, uh, Mom, I need permission to go out with my friends to a party. Sí, quiero salir a una fiesta con mis amigos. Y tu mamá te dice, ok, that's fine. But, está bien, pero you need to come before midnight. Sí, pero tienes que llegar antes de la medianoche. Está de acuerdo con darte permiso, pero por otra parte hay otra idea, ¿no? Ahí hay una condición buena en ese caso. I don't know if it's a little bit true. Oh, o sea, I, I, I don't know if it's a little bit uh, easy or it's not so good. The explanation, Alex, can you tell me, please? Uh, yes, teacher, thank you. Okay, thank you, Alex. So now let's see the next one, the third example. It says more police should be put on the streets. On the streets, that will help to help reduce crime. What do you think? So, Diani, please, can you help me in this uh, in this example? What expression uh, will will you choose from the three that we saw before? You've got a point, that's true, or I've never uh, really thought of it. Are you there, Diani? I never sí. really thought of it that way. La, la oración dice, los policías deberían... ¿Qué, qué dice la oración? 
Teacher. Okay, this, it says more police should be put on the street. Ma, eh, más policías deberían salir a las calles en este caso. Eh, that will help reduce crime. Eso eh, ayudaría a reducir el crimen. So what do you think? What do you think about this? Maybe if you agree, you can use that's true. Uh, you got a point, but... Mm, sería that's true, eh, but... Pero... Okay. Eh, the people's... It's true, but... But people... ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo podría decir que a las personas no les gusta que hagan controles o que estén... Circulando por las okay, calles. but people, in this case, we could be, but people won't feel comfortable uh, with the police present. That could be, I guess. But, uh, pero la gente no se siente cómoda con la, la presencia de la policía. Uh -huh. That could be. Yes, so that's that's a good example because you're you're you agree in some way with the part that uh, that says that will reduce the crime, but you share your opinion about some something else. But people won't feel comfortable with the police presence uh, on the streets. Could be. Okay, so thank you, Diane. Now let's. See the next one, uh, number four. Uh, let me see. Let me change the color. We have in here number four. This also has to do with cameras. Uh, cameras should be installed in cars that teenagers drive. It could prevent accidents. So in this part, uh, let me see. Cassandra, please, you're going to help me with this this sentence. Okay. That's true. But, pero, mucha tecnología es malo también. Okay, say it in English. Come on. But, is that uh, for people, the technology is not so good for the person. A veces abusan también de la tecnología. Okay, yeah, that's uh, what, what you said. Basically, that's true, but the abuse of technology is not good for people. Okay, so you got a point there in this, in this case. You share, um, share the, the idea, maybe that it could prevent accidents. That's the reason why you said that's true. But also you said that technology, it's, uh, if we abuse about technology, it can have maybe bad consequences on us. Okay, so thank you. But uh, remember that we have also some other expressions. For example, for example, uh, you've got a point, or also I never thought of it in that way. Nunca había pensado de no, no lo había pensado de esta manera, pero so let's see the last one. Uh, let me see. Let me see. The last one, number five, it says, I think kids as young as 12 or 13 should be held responsible responsible for their crimes. So uh, in this, uh, this part, Ellie and Drango is going to help me with this sentence. ¿Cómo, cómo nos quedaría? I think kids as young as 12 or 13, because you, you just have to write three sentences using these, these expressions that we practiced in the, in the previous activity, guys. So, and don't forget to write your name. Please, guys, uh, 
And if you have any trouble entering to this activity, let me know. Okay, so let me see if this is clear. Maybe, um, Eric, please, can you tell us what do we have to do? Yes, teacher. Um, con los ejemplos que nos dio, tenemos que responder a cuestiones personales que nos pongamos nosotros mismos utilizando lo, lo aprendido ahorita en las clases. Okay, yeah, that's it. And how much time do we have for this activity? ¿Cuánto tiempo minutos, tenemos? Teacher. Okay, yes. So, hurry up. Thank you, uh, Eric. Yes, don't forget to write your names. And it says that's true, but uh, if you have help from your parents, it is easier. Yeah. Also, it says maybe it is something you love a lot, then work becomes fun. Okay. Okay, so remember that you have to write a first, a first an, a statement and then you will have to react uh, to contrast uh, their, their, that statement with your personal opinion, guys. Using the expressions I already explained you. Okay. Okay, Elizabeth is working in the second example. Yep. Okay, also let's read Jocelyn's example. It said, it says, security cameras are essential to take care of our business. Okay. So, uh, let's see. Well, uh, you got a pointer, but there are other types of security word if your company is large. Yes, that's good. That's a mm -hmm. good example. Um, Eric's example as well is, is interesting. You have to win the lottery to have a lot of money. Uh, that's true, but you can also uh, be a politician. Okay, you have to win the lottery, <laughs> you have a lot of money. That's true, but you can also be a politician, okay. Okay, yeah. Just ha uh, be, be careful with the capital letters, guys. Yes, that's right. Don't forget that after the, the period, you need to start with a capital letter. Mm hmm Sorry, my microphone was off. Okay, guys, so now it's turn for unit or lesson 5D, which is the last one of lesson five. And we're going to continue with this topic of uh, crimes or maybe some problems we can have and the punishment, okay? So what I'm going to need from you guys, it's that you helping me, help me answering this question what kind of privacy issues do people worry about what kind of privacy issues do people worry about de qué tipo de eh, problemas de seguridad la gente se preocupa okay this word right here issues means problemas sí esa es la palabra que podemos ocupar para uh, in lugar de utilizar problems, we can use issues, okay? 
So um, what kind of privacy issues do people worry about? I'm going to share with you the link of this collaborative uh, board so you can as well participate answering the question in real time, okay? You have the link on your, um, on your chat on Zoom. Click on it and then enter and answer the question, okay? Uh, you're going to see the screen just like this. Van a ver la pantalla así como la vemos ahorita. Y van a ir escribiendo sus opiniones. ¿Sí? ¿Qué creen ustedes? ¿Cuáles son los problemas de privacidad que a la gente le preocupan? O, o de los que la gente se preocupa. What are these privacy issues? For example... This is my example. Uh, oops, sorry. Let me sh let me see. You should be able to write. Can you open the link, guys? Pudieron abrir el link? Okay, it doesn't matter if you cannot. Yes, yes, you could you could post. Could you post um an answer? Okay, yes, I can see that you seven of you are here, but I'm not sure if you can you if you could post. Let me refresh the Okay, I have 13 students right here. Uh, did you write your answer, guys? Did you post it? I should be seeing your post, but I can't. Okay, yes. Yes, I can now. So as I was telling you guys, please tell me what kind of issues do people worry about? Lack of security of police against criminals. That's right, that's an issue. Mm -hmm. We are not... Um, we are not... Or we don't feel secure enough, that's right. I think uh, that people worry about losing their restrictions. Okay. Yes. So the privacy issues that maybe uh, some people are worried about are uh, feel insecure. Okay. the lack of security against criminals, the security problems 
most uh, thought by people today's security in social networks. That's right. That's one of the main points we need to be secure on the web, right? Uh, somebody else tell me the, uh, theft from people during the day. That's right. We are afraid of being uh, robbed or that something happens with us. For example, also when somebody else hack your account, right? Cuando les, les clonan sus cuentas, les hackean su, sus cuentas. That's a privacy issue. Okay, I have more comments. Some of you say death or loss of devices. Yes, that's a kind of a uh, big problem with privacy, right? Because we have all of our lives in our cell phones. So when we lost or somebody else steals the cell phone from us, we can have some problems. Yes. Perhaps is the most classic of the threats that can affect that, our privacy. Mm -hmm. Because they have our data there. They can access to our pictures, they can access to our telephone numbers, and that's a very big privacy issue. Yes, Sabrina is right. People is aware or is uh, kind of afraid to lose their um their personal accounts right people worry about the information they can get and uh, that leads to theft for or ki or kidnapping yes some people they when they steal your um all your information they can have where are you going what do you do uh where do you live and they can even kidnap you, exactly. Uh, people worry about getting COVID. Yes, that's an issue, but it's not a privacy issue. Uh, current uh, concern of people regarding their privacy is based on losing their cell phone. Yes, that's right. Another security problem in schools, are, security problems in schools are very worrying, yes. Okay, a privacy problem can be, they can take our photos or information from an, our accounts and create a false one. Yes, that's the biggest problem. They can, um, they can use our pictures, right? And create a double account. Duplicate credit cards is a big problem. Yes, that's a security problem or a privacy problem. And fake social media accounts with personal information. That's for sure another problem. Yes, guys. Excellent. So you are aware about all these security problems we can have, right? And now when we, when we think about security, the main um the main point that we can get is first our cell phone because we have all our information there and we can also think about maybe our personal accounts of internet right i mean your facebook account maybe your email some uh, accounts where you can save some important information some valuable information Okay, so these are some of the most important privacy issues we can go through during our life, right? Okay, guys, so now you have told me some of these um, issues. But uh, what I'm going to show you now is the difference between some words. You are not going to use the same word as um, the same words as when you were in the first level. Now you're in fifth level and you need to use more um, a variety of different words that can mean the same. In this case, I'm talking about the word because. Okay. 
So there are some other words you can use instead of because or that they can have the same meaning as because. Sí, tenemos un, una variedad uh, de palabras que podemos en lugar, utilizar en lugar de because. They all going to have, uh, are going to have the same meaning. Todas con el mismo significado. Si nos van a permitir dar la razón, el porqué de algo. Um, before, okay, let me turn out, turn, I'm going to turn off the camera because my internet is getting slow, but yes, here you have some of the uh, phrases or words we can use instead of because. Okay. We're going to see how to use these words as well. Here we have, for example, the word because and since. Let's see when do you use each one. Okay, guys, so uh, can you help me reading this uh, part of because I don't know if you can see it. Can you help me reading please, Laura? Because and since. No, maybe. Laura. Teacher, disculpe, eh, estoy escuchando como con retraso. ¿Podría repetirme, por favor? Can you read, please? Okay, eh, because science, eh, they mean the same although science is more formal. They are followed by a subject and verb, subject plus verb. Uh, because our size can begin, begin or end a sentence when the clause is at the beginning is followed by a comma. Signs it's always so packet there's a young wait outside the club or there's a long wait outside the club sign signs it's always a packet the clause with because or signs is a subor so subordinate clause not a main clause mm -hmm. exactly thank you laura so here we have the explanation how are we going to use this word because because in scenes means almost the same. Si las dos van a tener como un significado muy parecido. La diferencia es que este since es mucho más formal. Lo van a encontrar ustedes en libros, en cartas, pero en ambos casos los dos van a estar acompañados, es decir, la frase que le sigue después va a ser una frase que va a tener un sujeto, un verbo y un complemento. See, for example, I feel tired, me siento cansada, because I was working until midnight, see. Está seguido de un sujeto después del because, I, y un verbo, no, I was working. Let me show you what I'm telling you. For example, I was saying I was tired. Because I was working until 2 a.m. in the morning. Okay, so I was tired because I was working until um, 2 a.m. I can also say I was tired 
since I was working until 2 a.m. Okay. So both mean the same. Las dos oraciones tienen el mismo significado. ¿sí? Es decir, que aquí tenemos un because para eh, referirnos o hablar sobre eh, el porqué de algo, dar una razón. Y aquí también tenemos el since que viene a darnos esa misma función. ¿no? Estoy cansada porque estuve trabajando hasta las 2 de la mañana y estoy cansada porque estoy trabajando desde las 2 de la mañana o porque estuve trabajando hasta las 2 de la mañana, ¿no? Estas dos serían o tienen el mismo significado, because and since. Since, en este caso, uh, podría decirse también desde, ¿no? Estoy cansada porque estoy trabajando desde las 2 de la mañana, pero en ambas situaciones estamos dando una razón, ¿sí? El since, como les decía, es mucho más formal. Hay que tener mucho cuidado cuando ustedes estén ocupando ya sea el since o el because al inicio de la oración, ¿sí? Porque ahí va a ir una coma. For example, if you say because I was writing, I was, sorry, working. Because I was working until 2 a.m., es decir, estoy dando la primera oración primero, coma, I was tired. Sí, mucho ojo en este caso con las oraciones eh, cuando empiezan con because, sí, porque eh, es importante, es necesario que haya una coma que separe ambas oraciones, sí, esa es la única novedad que o el since, cuando van al inicio de la oración, porque ojo, estas pueden ir ya sea al inicio o en el medio de la oración. Because and since, las dos significan por qué, ¿no? Tienen ese significado de por qué, estamos dando una razón. Ok, pay attention, maybe if you want, you can uh, make a screenshot, si les, se les hace mejor, eh, pueden tener. Okay, let's continue with the next word or pair of, word, of words. Vamos a ver las siguientes palabras. Wow, here we have because of or due to. Because of or due to. Okay, because of. You, maybe you're wondering and you're saying why. ¿Por qué en unas utilizo because para responder y en otras voy a tener que utilizar because of? ¿Sí? ¿Cuál es la diferencia? It's very easy indeed. No es tan complicado como parece. ¿Sí? La diferencia entre because y because of es meramente estructural. Es decir, que después de la palabra because... Como decíamos, nosotros vamos a tener una estructura de una oración. ¿A qué me refiero con eso? You're going to have a subject plus a verb plus a complement. Algo que no sucede cuando ustedes están ocupando el because of. El solo hecho de que le acompañe la preposición of va a cambiar la estructura que le va a acompañar. Es decir, que because of va a ir acompañado de un noun or maybe a phrase. Es decir, estamos dando o, o va a ir esta palabra because of acompañado de un sustantivo o de una frase o tal vez de un adverbio Sí, que nos permita describir algo. For example, here we have. Mm, 
let me see an example right here. Here you have the, these two examples. Due to the crowds, due to the crowds, debido a la multitud, the daisy or, or the daisy lizard is difficult to get into. Okay, difficult to the crowds. Um, debido a las multitudes, en este caso estamos ocupando un sustantivo, ¿no? Entonces, podríamos ya sea ocupar due to or because of. Este due to or because of van a tener ambos el significado no de por qué, sino más bien de debido a. Let me write it over here. That would be the meaning. Sí, este sería el significado en español. Debido a. Estamos dando también una razón o un motivo, ¿no? Because of or due to. For example, because of the weather, couldn't leave the house. Okay. Debido al clima, no pude salir de la casa. De la casa. That could be an example. See, because of the weather. Si ustedes se dan cuenta, justo después del because of, tenemos un sustantivo. No tenemos directamente una persona, ¿sí? Ni un verbo, sino que estamos introduciendo un sustantivo en este caso. Debido al clima, no pude salir de la casa. Because of the weather, I couldn't leave the house. We can also say, or we can also... Um, Change this this the sentence um, the order. See, sí, el orden de la oración puede variar. Podríamos poner I couldn't leave the house because of the weather. Otra posibilidad. I couldn't uh, leave the house because of the weather. Ahora. Necesito que ustedes sean muy observadores. And tell me what's the difference between these two sentences. Aparte del orden en el que están estas dos oraciones, ¿podrían decirme cuál es la diferencia? Here we have because of at the beginning. And here we have because of in the middle of the sentence. What happens? ¿Qué hace falta? ¿Cuál es la diferencia? ¿Qué notan? Coma, teacher. Exactly. La coma. La coma es muy importante. Cuando empezamos con because o con due to o con because of, va a ir con coma, ¿no? So here we have the comma. Don't forget. Ahora, este because of, como les decía, tiene el mismo significado que eh, due to and because of. Si sí, las dos son o significan exactamente lo mismo. Es decir, que podría yo hacer una oración en la que les diga um, due to the weather. I couldn't leave the house. Oops. Debido al clima, no pude salir de la casa. Due to the weather, comma, I couldn't leave the house. Sí, significan exactamente lo mismo. Pero ya tenemos más opciones, ¿sí? Y este due to lo vamos a encontrar mucho en artículos o en periódicos. Sí, es un poquito más formal. Let's continue with the next word. I don't know if you could see the difference between the use of because and because of. Si miren, para que sea un poco más evidente la diferencia entre el because y el because of, 
Miren, hay sentence. I couldn't leave the house because I was sick. En este caso no puedo ocupar because of I was sick. Y no se puede, no va. ¿Por qué? Porque tengo un sujeto, tengo un verbo y además tengo también mucho ojo con eso, chicos. Let's see, let's see, you're going to help me with some examples later to see if you catch the idea, okay? Let's continue with the next. Vamos a ver la siguiente, la siguiente frase que tenemos a continuación. Ojo que todas estas frases nos sirven a nosotros cuando queremos decir por qué, okay? To give reasons, cuando queremos dar la razón de algo. Then we have the use of for. For, um, you are, you're telling why are you doing something with, when you use it, this for. Hay algo importante cuando hablamos de este for. Sí, les voy a, voy a cambiar de pantalla y les voy a indicar en otra presentación. Para que sea más comprensible, esta está como que un poco más, um, más completa. Uh, we use for, we use for with the same meaning as because when we are introducing a new reason to the listener. Sí, vamos a utilizar este, esta preposición for con el significado de because, es decir, por qué. Cuando nosotros estamos agregando una razón, si ¿sí? estamos dando una razón, Nueva para la persona que está escuchando. Es decir, si yo les quiero dar otro motivo, puedo utilizar for, porque ustedes los que están escuchando, ¿sí? no conocen de esta opción. Look at this. I had to stay home and nurse my sick child. ¿Sí? Tuve que quedarme en la casa y cuidar de mi hijo enfermo. For she was too sick to go to the school. Sí, en este caso estamos utilizando este for como un because. Porque ella estaba demasiado enferma para ir a la escuela. For she was too sick to go to the school. Ok. Uh, let me uh, change and share another example with for. Look at this. The firefly is famous for its fantastic music. ¿Sí? Um, what's the meaning of firefly? Let me check. Firefly. La luciérnaga. Firefly means luciérnaga. So, the firefly is famous for, for its fantastic music. Es famosa por su uh, música fantástica, por el sonido que hace, ¿no? Estamos dando la razón de por qué. That's the meaning of for. Así que algunas veces ustedes se van a encontrar... Utilizando el for para dar una razón, diciendo el porqué de algo. And finally, we have this one that it's a, a phrase very used by people. And the reason that or the reason why is very common. Sí, es muy utilizada esta frase uh, cuando estamos dando razones, no? When you're giving reasons. For example... So, 
For example, when you are using this phrase, the reason that or the reason why, you can say the reason I bought the dress was because it was on sale. So here we have an example. And remember that you can use the reason um, why or the reason that. The reason why I bought the dress was the, because it was on sale, right? Or maybe I can use, sorry about the small letter, the reason that I missed class, let's say, was because The reason that I missed class was because I lost the bus. Sí, la razón por la que yo perdí o no llegué a la clase fue porque perdí el bus, no pude tomar el, el bus. Sí, esta frase es muy ocupada. Lo que deben tener en cuenta es que van a utilizar that o why, ese es opcional, pueden ocupar cualquier otro. The reason why or the reason that means exactly the same. Sí, significa lo mismo. So, it means that we can use all these phrases when we want to give reasons. Sí, podemos ocupar todas estas frases cuando queremos dar eh, razones, cuando queremos explicar ¿no? la, razón, la razón de algo. So, um, let's continue, guys, with the next part of the of the video. Now, I want to ask you these questions, guys. You have it on the board. What's the main idea uh, of the reading? What privacy issues have you experienced? And what do you understand with the title of the article? Because we're going to read, we're going to read um, on page 50, I think, yes, on, on page 50, we're going to make a short reading, okay? So I'm going to ask some of you to help me reading aloud, and we're going to answer these questions. So pay attention for the reading and also to the questions we need to answer. You're going to answer me what's the main idea. ¿Cuál es la idea principal del texto? What privacy issues have you experienced personally? Sí, ¿qué, ¿Cuál de estos problemas de seguridad han, han pasado ya ustedes por eso? Um, and what do you understand with the title of the article? Sí, ¿Qué les comunica, qué les dice el título del artículo? Let me share with you the book so you can see the same as me. Okay, guys. Now you have the book. We're going to start with the title. This time we're going to start from the last part to the first part. Sí, vamos a ir esta vez al revés. Vamos a empezar opinando del título. Can you read the title, please, Grace? Solo leer. Is your smartphone too smart for you on good? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is your smartphone too smart for your own good? ¿Qué les dice a ustedes o qué pretende a hacer esta pregunta? ¿Qué, ¿Qué les viene a la mente? What do you think, Digna?
What do you think about this title? Is this telling you something special? Maybe, um, Giovanna, what do you think? Si llega alguien y les dice, is your smart, smartphone too smart for your own good? Es su teléfono, su celular inteligente, demasiado inteligente para usted, para su propia seguridad. Okay, Giovanna, can you write it on the chat, please? What do you think when you read this title? ¿Qué se les viene a la mente cuando leen este título? Anderson, what do you think? No significa nada, no se les viene nada, nada a la mente. Okay, Giovanna says, I believe that technology has somewhat exceed the expectations of intelligence. Okay, that's right. Somebody else wanted to say something? Alex? <laughs> Disculpe, he estado teniendo todo el día problemas con mi internet. No he podido participar tan a gusto. Yes, I, I think that something is going on with the internet because my connection is also getting a little bit slow sometimes. Ajá, Eric says that... Entonces... Tell me, Alex. Is your smartphone too smart for... Es más o menos sobre teléfonos inteligentes. O sea... Creo que vamos a hablar sobre eh, el tema sí, sobre los teléfonos. Ok, about smartphones or cell phones. Thank you. Eric says that people's intelligence is questioned. That's interesting. Yes, it's questionable, right? Está eh, en tela de duda, como decimos nosotros. Es cuestionable la inteligencia de las personas y las máquinas pueden superarnos, right? Maybe the idea tell us that if maybe we control the cell phone or the cell phone to us. That's an excellent question, uh, Laura. Laura is mentioning or is saying that who controls who, right? Quien controla al quien? The smart, you control the smartphone or maybe the phone is controlling you? That's a good reflection. Very good, guys. So, what are we going to do now? Pay attention. I'm going to ask you guys to help me reading this article. Me van a ayudar a leer el artículo, okay? We're going to uh, start with this part. Van a ayudar desde el You're going to read, Alex? Alex, you have your... Microphone. Hello, Ma Alex. Okay, yes. Can you help me, guys, please, uh, reading this part? Mm. Brian, are you there? Uh, sorry, teacher, Leo? Yes. Solo hasta la parte de friends, pero. Okay. Um, gone are the days uh, when a cell phone just make calls. We use our smartphone to text, take, and post photos. ¿Cómo sería? ¿Fotos o fo photos? Photos. Photos. Ajá. Uh -huh. Cuando ustedes vean una PH, en inglés suena como una F. Sí. 
like my, en mi nombre igual, mi nombre está escrito en inglés, por eso es PH, Stephanie, PH. In this case, photos suena como una F. Ya yeah, teach. Photos online, access my and social networks, get direction, check prices in stores, find nearby restaurants, and even find nearby friends. Okay, thank you, Brian. Here we have a new word. We have the word nearby. Nearby means close. So it means cerca. Sí, ese sería el significado de nearby. Algo que queda cerca. Uh, nos referimos, por ejemplo, dice, podemos encontrar uh, restaurantes cercanos. Sí. Let me change. Cerca for cercano. And even find nearby friends. Y también encontrar amigos cercanos o que se encuentren como a nuestra redonda, ¿no? Cerca de nosotros. Um, so, gone are the days when a cell phone just made calls. ¿Sí? Ya se fueron los días en los que el teléfono solo se ocupaba para hacer llamadas. Now you, you can even order food, right, on your phone. Ahora ya podemos comprar esta comida desde el teléfono. Let's continue with the next part. From however, desde la parte de however, hasta el final del, parra, del párrafo, it's going to help me reading Lisbeth. Please, Lisbeth, can you help me reading this part? However, Hey teacher, however, the rigs, the smartphones, phones can be understated. The truth is that smartphones are a bit too smart when it comes to uh, gathering and sharing or personal information, such a uh, location, contacts, uh, messages, photos, and even financial data. Um, a beautifully alls can be passed to project as against invasion of privacy, but lawmakers simply haven't kept up with a change in technology why show uh, anyone be concerned. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Thank you, Liz. So, have, however, the risks smartphones pose can be underestimated. Sí, la posesión de o, o el tener estos smartphones, el riesgo de tener estos smartphones, se ha sobreestimado. Okay, it's underestimated. Se ha sobreestimado. The truth is that the smartphones are a bit too smart when it comes to gathering and sharing our personal information. This word uh, gather means reunir. See, I don't know if I can write it over here. Let me try. Exacto. Dice que los teléfonos en realidad se han vuelto un poco más inteligentes, ¿no? Sobre todo al momento en que nosotros reunimos o compartimos en share our personal information, nuestra información personal, such as location, contacts, messages, photos, and even our financial data. It means all the information about our banks and stuff. Obviously, laws can be passed to protect us against invasion of privacy, but lawmakers simply haven't kept up with changes in technology. 
¿Sí? ¿A qué se refiere este párrafo, esta parte de aquí específicamente? Obviously, ¿no? Obviamente las leyes, los, can be passed, ¿sí? Pueden aprobarse. Let me write the meanings of these words. Las leyes pueden aprobarse para protegernos sobre la invasión de la privacidad, ¿ok? They can be passed to protect us against invasion of privacy. But lawmakers, pero los, las personas que crean las leyes, ¿sí? Lawmakers... Quienes hacen o quienes crean la ley, ¿no? They simply haven't kept up with changes in technology. Es decir, que ellos no han logrado ponerse al día, no pueden alcanzar a los cambios tecnológicos que suceden día a día. Why should anyone be concerned? This word also, it's very important, guys. ¿Por qué deberíamos preocuparnos? Concern is to be worry. Sí, concern sería un sinónimo de worry. Significa preocuparse. Ok, guys. So, here we have um, an idea about the, the, these smartphones and all the things that we can go or we can do or we can share without even noticing in our cell phones. Let me erase this. Please make notes of the new words. Tomen nota de las nuevas palabras y vamos al siguiente párrafo. Okay, here we have, first of all, Can you help me reading, please, uh, Eli Andrango, first of all? Teacher? Mm -hmm. Can you help me reading this part, please? Does the first all? Yes. yes. First of all, smartphone service providers uh, typically save information about who you call, what messages uh, you send, where you are and much more. They often share this information with third parties, eh, such as mar marketers who want to know your location, friends and personal dates. Ask your provider how to opt out of this part of your contract. Also, if you don't want your phone to keep track of your location, turn off this feature. Exactly. So, uh, here what we're uh, listening or what we are uh, seeing is that the providers or the, the cell phone companies are selling our information, right? They are very attentive and they notice who we call, what do we say, where are we, okay? And some extra important information. Sí, es, están en todos los servidores de, del teléfono. Ven a quién llaman, cuál es el número de esa persona, qué mensaje le dan, en dónde están, sí? And that information can be sold to marketers. ¿Sí? Esa información puede ser vendida a gente de marketing que paga mucho dinero por esas bases de datos. Okay, guys. So, uh, let's continue. Here we have an, uh, something else. Um, ask your provider how to opt out. This is a new word, and uh, sería como darse de baja, ¿no? O como eh, pedir el alta o, o 
pedir retirarse de una base de datos, ¿no? Ask your provider how to opt out of this part in your contract. Cuando nosotros firmamos el contrato, en, eh, por ejemplo, de internet o cosas así, ahí o, o ustedes adquieren incluso una tarjeta de crédito o de débito, ahí les dice en alguna parte del contrato que ustedes aceptan eh, compartir su información con terceros. ¿Sí? Y sí, debe haber formas, ustedes al menos los abogados, you should know how to opt out. Deben saber cuál es el truco para que la gente pueda salirse o retirarse de esto. Ok. Uh, so, uh, let's end this and, 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 and we go to the, the a short re, uh, break, ok. Let's end this part. Vamos a ir terminando esta parte y luego salimos a un pequeño receso. Okay, so let's continue with the next part of the reading. I'm going to ask someone else to help me. Let me show you, let me show you. Okay, can you help me please? Um, Anderson, can you help me please reading the next part? Second. Hello, Anderson, are you there? Second, your smartphone apps may be quietly collecting your private private data. You know, now you need to be careful with that. Perhaps this shouldn't be allowed, but it is. So before you download a new app, read the privacy terms. Si antes de descargarse cualquier aplicación, nos dice aquí, lea. Lea los términos y condiciones. If it collects information that you doesn't really need, you probably shouldn't download it. Okay, so third, I think uh, think twice before you use the Wi-Fi in a coffee house, as there's always a chance that someone used an illegal malware to spy on your private data, such as your bank account details. To avoid, avoid getting hacked, don't use public Wi-Fi to access sensitive information. Okay, so here we have some clues and things we can do. And we have the next paragraph. This is a big one. Can you help me? I don't know if it's Jenny or Josie over there. Would you ladies help me reading this? Your teacher. Finally, think about what will happen in your phone. Got stolen? Unless you have good password protection. Your personal and financially, financial data uh, could be accessed immediately. Choose a password that can easily be guessed. Also, don't let your smartphone remember your other password. I have every website request your password each time you access it. In addition, you can use programs that allow you to, you to erase all the data from your for phone if it's lost or stolen. Ask your service provider for information. Mm -hmm, exactly. So here we have some clues, right? Aquí ya tenemos algunas pistas de qué deberíamos hacer. Um, choose a password that can be easily uh, guessed. Elegir contraseñas que no sean tan fáciles, ¿no? Como uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cosas así. Um, have maybe a pattern or a password for protection. 
especially as you mentioned with the phone, right? Que uno de los problemas más importantes que tenían era perder el celular, ¿no? Entonces hay que proteger la información que hay dentro del celular. Can you help me reading the last paragraph we have right here, please? Mm. Let me see. Vicky, can you help me reading the last paragraph? Loss. Hello, Vicky. Excuse me, teacher. Can you help a me ver, read in the last paragraph? Se me ríe, teacher, que es que es una cembulla y no le escucho. <laughs> okay, teacher. Laws may need to be passed to ensure smartphone privacy, but in the meantime, it's up to you to outsmart your smartphone. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. So here we have a clue. We have a word out smart. Es decir, como um, dejar de hacerle inteligente, en este caso al teléfono, ¿no? Está en nuestras manos. It's up to you, depende de ustedes, dejar de hacerle tan inteligente al, al teléfono, ¿no? Like stop doing that, frenar un poco. Okay, so uh, we read about what? What was the reading about? ¿De qué se trataba la lectura? Can you tell me on the chat, guys? Pueden escribirme en el chat. ¿De qué se trataba la lectura? What was the reading about? Or what was the main idea? ¿Cuál era la idea principal? What was the main idea of this reading? That uh, smartphones today are more related to people privacy, exactly, yes. That was some of the ideas of, of the reading. Could be also the main idea, how to use the technology properly. What else? What, they, what were you reading in the article? This is one of the main topics that the smartphones are uh, getting too smart. They can have our information and sometimes the private policy da don't work. It doesn't work as we want. And they share some information of ours with others, exactly. Here we, they were also sharing some uh, tips, right? I mean, estaban compartiendo un par de tips o ideas para um, cuidar de nuestras cuentas. Mm -hmm. We need to read, read before downloading any app. Necesitamos leer antes de descargarnos las, las aplicaciones. Smartphones have a protection system for users. Yes, how to improve the use of technology in our smartphone and how to collect and share our personal information, such as location, contacts. Okay, exactly. Thank you, Josie. We need to be careful with the information that we post, right? Hay que ser cuidadosos con la información que se comparte en las redes sociales especialmente. Okay, guys. Uh, we need to complete, we need to find expressions in the article in order to complete these eight sentences, okay? We're going to do this when we're back, sorry. I, um, I, I, I couldn't start the class earlier because of the internet problem, but we're going to have a short break, okay? Because... Uh, uh, a few lines, uh, because... And uh, is difficulty about uh, its topic. Okay, it's difficult to uh, talk about this topic. Could be okay. Let's see if Cassandra has the answer for number two. What should you do in order to keep your location private? Mm. This is a, a ver, they often share 
uh, the disinformation with third parties, so mm -hmm. such as marketers will have to know your location, friends and personal states. Yes, but what do you do when you don't want that anybody else know knows your location? Le ponen una aplicación. Okay. Eh, apps, eh, your smartphone apps may be pretty collecting your private data. Okay, you can have an, an application, but uh, how do you know or how um, people can know where are you? ¿Cómo saben en dónde están ustedes? For example, hmm, maybe Instagram, if you are posting something, they know exactly where are you, why? ¿Por qué los teléfonos saben dónde se encuentran ustedes? There's something that you have uh, been turning on. ¿Hay algún, alguna opción que tienen encendida? ¿Cuál es esa? Ubication, teacher. Ubication or GPS, teacher. El GPS, exactly. You can, uh, if you don't want that, that anybody else knows your location, you need to turn off your GPS. Okay, that could be um, a possible solution. You can turn off the GPS. What about this number three, Anderson? Why do you think third parties or other companies want to know your location and personal tastes? Es de teacher dice la segunda yo. <laughs> number three, number three, come on. Dice que que por qué? Because. Come on, come on. While Anderson thinks about number three, Diana, can you help me with number four, please? What should you do before you download a new app? A teacher, uh, before downloading a, an application, you should look at the terms and conditions. Mm -hmm, exactly, you should look or you should read at the terms, right? The terms and conditions. Thank you. Eric, are you ready for number five? Um, not to separate dates, have great password, wise numbers later combinate. Mm -hmm. Okay, would be like... Uh, no tengo el libro a la mano, teacher, por eso. <laughs> okay. Don't use a simple password. What else? There's something else they say about passwords. ¿Qué más nos dice sobre las contraseñas? Don't use simple passwords and something else. Let me see. Can you? Yo, yo tengo la mía ya. Yes. Okay. Tell me, Anderson. Eh, 
Eh, o sea, no sé si estaré bien porque no le entendí muy bien la pregunta. Porque, a ver, sería because eh, markets needs to sell. Eh, and, o sea, on the they know you, ¿cómo sería? Que tener eh, los, los mercados necesitan saber sobre nosotros para poder vendernos. Ok, yes, because marketers need to know about who. Yes, about who. About us, about us. Necesitan saber sobre nosotros. They need to know about us. Si sí, marketers need to know about us. That's right, yes. Los mar los, las personas de marketing, ¿no? Ellos necesitan estos datos para poder eh, fa facilitar un estudio de mercado. Ok, thank you, Anderson. Uh, let's see the last one. Maffer, can you help me with your answer? What else do you know about protecting your privacy? You can write the answer on the chat if you can't talk because you have the problem with the microphone. Jenny, can you help me with um, the second answer of number five? A ver, teacher. A ver, Jenny, el article nos dice algo sobre los passwords, ¿no es cierto? Don't use simple passwords and what else? ¿Qué más tenemos que hacer con las contraseñas? A ver, ¿cómo sería? Read the article, lean el... el y me parece que en el cuarto párrafo tienen la respuesta. Es patin secor password. Can you Can you repeat that, please? A ver, dice so before you download a new app. No, es hacer leer la privacidad. Ok. Aparte que dice, unless you have good password protection, your personal and financial that could be accessed immediately. ¿Sí? ¿Eso? Mm -mm. Choose a password that can easily... Yes. Also, don't let your smartphone remember your other password. Okay, don't let, exactly. Don't let your phone remember your passwords. That's the other advice. Don't let your phone remember your password. Exactly, so... Uh, we need to be careful with the passwords because otherwise you can have some uh, privacy issues or privacy problems. But um, let's see, let's see what do we have next. This, uh, this reading was very important because you're going to um, use it a lot in this class. Si sí, esa lectura de la página 50 van a tener que leerse unas cuantas veces porque les va a servir para hacer el classwork. Okay, so pay attention guys. What are we going to do now? Uh, let's move, let me erase this so we can move. Here you have five questions, okay? Um, Read these five questions 
answer these five questions because in based on these notes we're going to write a comment okay so you will have to read again the article on page 50 you will have to read these five questions and answer these questions in order to take or to have some material to write the comment you will present as your classwork okay so in the first one or in the first sentence in the first question we have what did you think of the article y es decir que tendremos que volver a leer el artículo de la página 50 y escribir con las frases que les dio teacher diego Sí, y las que hemos visto hasta ahorita. ¿Qué es lo que opinan sobre el artículo? What do you think about the article? Did you find the information relevant or helpful? Tal vez la información que les da el artículo fue relevante o de ayuda. Was it relevant or helpful? Question number two. Are you concerned about all the personal information that it's collected in your smartphone? Si ¿Sí? son conscientes ustedes de toda la información personal que ustedes tienen dentro de su teléfono? Have you ever had a problem because uh, personal information was shared by a service provider or an app? Si ¿Sí? tal vez han tenido alguna vez un problema porque tal vez alguna empresa dio sus, sus datos y luego les están llamando, les están mandando mails a decir que se ganaron la lotería o lo que sea. Ok. En number four we have, do you know anyone who has gotten hacked by a criminal with malware? malware? Si conocen a alguien que le hayan hackeado, no solo su cuenta, si puede ser que también le hayan clonado la tarjeta. Sí, con el, o, o clonado el teléfono también con algún virus, ¿no? With a malware. And number five, what should be done about invasion of privacy for, smart, for smartphones? You're given a solution here. Aquí ustedes van a presentar una solución. ¿Qué es lo que se debería hacer para manejar de mejor manera la privacidad en los teléfonos? Okay, so these are the five questions you need to answer. And what are you going to do, guys? You are going to write a comment, an online comment, just like this one we have right here. Si una vez que ustedes hayan vuelto a leer el artículo y hayan respondido a estas preguntas, van a escribir un mail well, no, it's not a mail, it's a comment. Un comentario, una opinión, muy parecida a la que tienen en pantalla. Sí, don't forget to use these words. No se olviden de utilizar las palabras que vimos al inicio. Teníamos because, we had since, and we have as. Se me olvidó eh, comentarles un poco de cómo utilizamos el as. El as es tan formal como el since. Sí, y, los, y también puede ser, eh, puede tener un significado de por qué. Uh, for example, I also found it worrisome as it seems there aren't enough laws. También lo encuentro preocupante porque no sabemos eh, si hay suficientes leyes. O parece ser que no hay suficientes leyes. <coughs> Este as en este caso funciona también como un por qué. No es tan utilizado, no es tan popular, más se ocupan las otras formas que fueron las que les indiqué. Eh, so, uh, don't forget to use those forms. No se olviden de utilizar estas palabras para explicar sus razones, para dar su opinión, ¿ok? So, uh, let's read this opinion so you know or you have an idea of what are you going to write. You're going to do something very similar to this over here. Can you help me reading the first one, please? Ellie, you want to say something? 
Teacher, pero ahí dentro del writing tiene que ir las, eh, las respuestas de las cinco preguntas que están arriba. Exacto. Es Ustedes van a basarse en esas preguntas para que las respuestas ustedes puedan formar este comentario. Yeah, thank you, teacher. Miren, por ejemplo, en el primer párrafo tienen, I found this article very relevant. Están respondiendo a la primera pregunta que les decía, ¿qué opinaron del artículo? ¿Es relevante? ¿Fue de ayuda? Sí. I found this article very relevant. Because it gives us helpful, uh, helpful suggestions for protecting personal information. I also found it worrisome as it seems there aren't enough laws against the invasion of privacy. Aquí están dando ustedes la opinión de lo que, de lo que ha sido el artículo. ¿Es relevante? ¿No es relevante? ¿Fue de ayuda? ¿No fue de ayuda? Y están ocupando también las palabras que vimos. Look at this. Here we have a because, for example. Ok, because it gives, it gives helpful suggestions for protecting uh, personal information. I also found it, blah, 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 blah. We're going to find some other, uh, some other giving reason words, for example, because, since, or as during this reading. Sí, aquí tienen un ejemplo. Uh, let's see, and let's see if somebody else can help me reading this part. Brian, can you help me reading this part, please? Uh, dice, I haven't had any problems with my smartphone because I am very careful about how is how I use it. A friend of mine, however, received a lot of angel, annoying. annoying spam because she annoying. Mm -hmm. Annoying. I know. <clears throat> annoying, annoying spam because she downloaded uh, an app for shopping discounts. Another friend got hacked when he used the Wi-Fi in a coffee house to check his bank account. Mm -hmm, exactly. So, guys, here in this case, in this case, we have look at this because because. And we have an example. Aquí ya tenemos un ejemplo, ¿no? De conocidos a los que les pasó eso. Es decir, que estaríamos respondiendo la pregunta dos o tres, me parece. Tres y cuatro. Estamos re en este párrafo ya estamos respondiendo las preguntas tres y cuatro. So you're giving some examples of, of who uh, had been through this. Y de quién ha, ha pasado por esta situación de, de hackeos o cosas por el estilo. Ok, let's see uh, the next paragraph and I think it's the final one. Can you help me reading this paragraph, please? Nancy, are you there? If not, Nancy, can you help me, please? Um, Kumi, we need more laws. Teacher? Mm -hmm. A ver, <laughs> Uh, we need more labs uh, to project our privacy things. Everyone now has a smartphone. Um, commission or express will be created to pro propose it. new labs. And the lab should be passed a kit grid. All survival readers should be uh, required to give user clear instructions on how to project, project 
their personal information as it is difficult to know how to do this. Mm -hmm, exactly. Thank you, Nancy. So in this last paragraph, you have uh, you have the answer of question number five. It means that you are giving us some uh, suggestions. You're telling us what can we do in order to protect. Look at this. Here we have, we need more laws. Okay, and uh, we can also use some words to give reasons, for example, since, since everyone now has a smartphone or because everyone knows now has a smartphone. Okay, so be careful with the use of these words. Let me share with you guys the link of what you have to do. Voy a compartirles el link de lo que tienen que hacer. You need to be clear on this, guys. Okay, um, you need to pay attention and know what you have to do. Mucha atención a lo que tenemos que hacer, ¿no? Is Okay. Anyway, let me share with you uh, your classwork. I'm going to share with you the link of uh, what you have to do today, which is uh, your classwork number 11. What are you going to do in this classwork, guys? You will have to write, as I told you previously, you will have to answer this five questions and with those answers you will have to write a comment just like this with a title and explaining what do you think about the article okay giving some examples and telling and telling us some results or something we can do in order to solve this problem so um and let me just share the link with you. I need to link to share the link so everybody can have and everybody can start uh, developing this this task. Let me see. Here it is. So, teacher, sabe que las preguntas casi ni se las no se no se las ve muy bien. No sé si sea solo yo. Did you click on the on the picture? Sí, teacher. O sea, justo ahorita en la, en la parte que usted está, ahí, ahí están las, las preguntas. No, yes, you need to click. Once you ah, open, once you open. Ah, ya. Yeah. Ok, ok, teacher. Mm -hmm. Once you open the link, you can click rather on the questions or you can click on the example just to, to, to have a guide. Para que se puedan guiar, solo hacen clic y pueden ver las, las, las preguntas y eh, cómo podrían estructurar su, su comentario. Okay. Um, can you tell me, guys, can you tell me, ah, what, how much time do you have for this activity? You have 30 minutes, guys. 30 minutes to complete this activity. Can you tell me, please, Cassandra, what do we have to do? We made the, the article about the questions, question, um, the Padlet answer the questions in 30 minutes. Okay, you have 30 minutes. I don't think it's clear enough, guys. No, no siento que está 100% entendido. You need to read the article on page 50 again. Y hay que volver a leer el, el artículo de la página 50. You need to answer these questions. Necesitan responder estas preguntas en una hojita por ahí a borrador. Y en base a sus respuestas van a hacer un artículo de opinión como este. See, where you're going to explain 
express what do you think about the article. Aquí ustedes van a poner qué es lo que opinaban del otro artículo de la página 50. Is it clear or do you have any question, guys? Teacher, no toca hacer, o sea, según yo le entendí que toca hacer un artículo de opinión con las, pre, con las respuestas de las preguntas. ¿Así? ¿O sí, exacto. Hacer... Entonces, ¿no hacemos nada con el artículo de la, de la página del libro o solo es para guiarnos? El artículo de la página 50 es sobre el que ustedes van a opinar. Sí, ustedes necesitan leer otra vez el artículo que no pusieron atención de la página 50, el que leímos antes de salir al break. Van a volver a leer ese. Y las preguntas que ustedes tienen aquí son en base a ese artículo. Miren, aquí dice, answer these questions about the article on page 50. Entonces, todas estas preguntas son en base a ese artículo. Y luego ustedes van a escribir su opinión sobre el artículo. ¿Qué debe ser como esta que tenemos aquí? Esta es una guía para que ustedes sepan cómo puede quedar su participación. Utilizando las palabras because, due to, since, las que vimos hoy. Is it clear or maybe do you have any question, guys? Okay, guys, what you have to do this week as homework is to complete the writing form number two. This is the last form you're going to do on Cambridge platform, okay? So this is the last uh, participation in the forum. Uh, it's going to be written this time. So you will have to write about crime and punishment. We we'll continue with the same topic of unit number five. So uh, what you will have to do, guys, is to answer a simple question. Okay. In this, um, in this forum you just have to answer to one simple question what is that question the question is going to be should all criminals be punished the same way and why you are going to explain your reasons okay using obviously the words and all the phrases and vocabulary that we have been using during this unit number five Vamos a utilizar todo el contenido gramatical y de vocabulario de esta unidad 5 para poder eh, participar en el último writing forum que tienen. La pregunta a la que debemos responder es, should all crimes should be punished the same way and why? ¿Sí? ¿Deberían castigarse de la, misma forma, de la misma forma todos los crímenes? Sí, no, ¿por qué? Van a dar las razones utilizando las palabras que vimos, utilizando las frases que vimos, ¿ok? And you have also an example, an example that you can uh, uh, use as a guide. Si ¿sí? pueden ocuparle como una guía el ejemplo. Where are you going to do this? How do you do this? Don't forget, you need to go to the um, Cambridge platform. Go to this class tool section and make click in forum, ¿ok? No se olviden que para entrar al forum vamos a la pestaña de class tools, ingresamos a foro y una vez que se abre el foro, ustedes van a avanzar hasta la unidad 5, que es la unidad de la que estamos hablando, ¿no? Unit number 5. And you're going to make a click on expand to show topics. Sí, justo en esta que dice expandir para abrir los, los temas. You click on lesson B, crime and punishment, and then you will find your writing forum. So you can click on the writing forum and you can um, start with your participation. Once you click on the writing forum, 
all the order or all, all the command it's going to be there remember that you have one week to complete or to participate in the forum and the example you can download here we have as an as an image the example because i couldn't attach the image so if you want to see the example you can open it and watch the example i i wrote for you okay that's uh your homework for next week so next week you're going to um write your participation here on the um writing forum that's the last forum you're going to perform during this semester and guys this grade book should be at least at 80 percent el, el porcentaje de avance de la plataforma de Cambridge debería estar al 80%. Nos queda una semana para acabar el libro. Y ni ustedes no van ni por la mitad. This means that you haven't been doing the homework, you haven't been doing the content, you haven't been doing the online workbook. So you need to complete the online workbook as well. Acuérdense que dentro del contenido ustedes tienen que avanzar las pestañas de workbook, course y video activities. Que hasta la siguiente semana ya debería estar cubierto un 80% de todo el libro, es decir, deberían ya tener completa hasta la unidad 5, cosa que no ha pasado. Okay, guys, are you do you have any question? 